Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back again. Eid Mubarak. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. May Allah bless everyone's watching and also we be part of it, inshallah. Make dua for us. So we are talking about um, celebrating Eid. Also, we're also talking about two of our brothers, mashallah, here in the river, they became Muslim and wanted to know their journey about Islam. It's really inspiring. Alhamdulillah. Um, dear brothers and sisters, we go back to our brothers again. Um, we talked about a few things, but I wanted to know what really um, attached their heart when it comes to teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So can I start with Dawood? We finished with you, so I'll mm -hmm. start with you again. Um, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, is a, a, our Prophet. We don't worship him. Of if course. someone thinks that we worship him, that would be wrong. We don't pray to him, we don't worship him. Um, he's a prophet that he taught us. He's like a teacher to us, right? He's the main connector with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or told us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his life is a teaching to us. But what attracted you the most? What attracted me the most, first and foremost, was his honesty. SubhanAllah. He obviously is known as al -Amin. The honest, uh, which also made me very convinced that he's a prophet in the first place. Because I was looking at him, it's like, how can somebody dishonest with such a good character be a liar? It can't be. SubhanAllah. Allahu Akbar. Um, generally, obviously, the character in general, how he dealt with people, how, when there was conflict, how he solved it, how compassionate he was towards his fellow brothers, his wives, how it, he always just managed to solve issues with such a, again, adab, such compassion, such love for his brothers and sisters in Islam. Jazakallah khair, my brother. You know, um, brother, same question to you. Um, you know, um, people might think, like, we, that's why we wanted to clear off, that we don't worship, uh, um, like people are worshipping Jesus in yeah. this country where we are. So you've got a love for the Prophet, but in the same time, we don't worship. See what I mean? You have to be clear off, you know? Yeah. We don't pray to him. We pray for him. Yeah. You see what I mean? When we say uh, Duru, that's it. We pray for him. May Allah bless him. May Allah make, you know, give him the peace and, and glad tidings. So what attracted you the most when it comes to Prophet's teaching? So I'd say on what he was saying, how, you know, his honesty, there was an instance where his son Ibrahim died and you, you might know the story, I can't remember the full details but there was like something to do with, was it the moon or something along them lines. The people said, okay, yeah, this man, he's, he's a prophet because, or, because you know, his son has passed and the, there's like a sign that says when this happens and he says, no, this is not, this has nothing to do with it. See, you he know? could have used it. He could mm. have used it, but he decided, no, no. That's not who he was, you know. And another thing is, you know, he would say to the Quraysh, she'd be like, if I was to tell you there was an army coming over this mountain, would you believe me? Yes. If I was to tell you, you know, the teachings he would teach, but they denied, you know. And another thing in regards to his character, his willingness to suffer for this ummah. Because he had, you know, but the one dua that all the prophets have, He's saving that for us on the Day of Judgment. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Yeah. Subhanallah. It's true, my brother. You know, look at his life. You know, like he, sometime in his house, there were no food. Three months. They, three so, months. So no, no fire, food. just dates and water. Subhanallah. There was a time they, uh, the boycott, they were forced out of Mecca. They had to eat the leaves, you know. Allahu Akbar. Inshallah, brothers, um, we go back to your journey again. You know, when, when, uh, when I hear lots of river brothers, when they talk about that, and they, when in the beginning, they haven't told their family yet they're Muslims. So they struggle about their ha uh, halal food. They struggle to, if they're fasting, they struggle to tell them, that I'm not going to eat now. So they struggle to pray. Did you guys have uh, any of these uh, uh, things? For me, um, not so much because obviously I was in the UK. My 
parents are back in Austria, but before I told them, so I was back home, before I told them, it was a bit difficult for them to, to navigate the food, but I just told them I'm vegetarian. Oh, and that worked. It worked for you then? It worked for, I think, about... I think most food. people do this, isn't it? I don't know, this I mean, it's, it's not a trick. You just want to um, keep everybody happy, to be honest with you, isn't it? You don't want to insult them. Of course, they have their own way of lifestyle. They have their own way of seeing things. You don't just jump up and say, you're wrong. Yeah, and you're going to hell or whatever, you know, like this kind of stuff. So you had to, uh, um, how about praying when it comes to pray? Did the, how did you manage to pray then in your home? Making all do, pray, you know, how did that happen? I just excused myself quickly, went up to my room, prayed for like, you know, five minutes or so, came back. Nobody really questioned it. And then Alhamdulillah, later then, they obviously they knew why when I told them. But before then, I just excused myself, went to my room, prayed, came back down. But the Tarsin, anything, same, same similar things, same question to you? The, for me, my situation was like this. While I was learning about Islam, and obviously, like this was before I said Shahada, I more or less had accepted it into my heart already, you know? And I was very firm on that. I said to my mother, uh, Mama, I, I don't want to, like, I'm not eating pork anymore. I don't want to eat this meat. I'll do my own cooking. So I take on my own cooking for like a bit, but then obviously, alhamdulillah, my mother, she's very supportive. You know, she would, uh, you know, help get like the meats that I would need to like be able to consume. So for me, it's like, I was very firm on this. I didn't want to lie to them and like make excuses. I think for me, the best thing I could do for them is to be upfront and honest about this because they deserve to know. When you speak to them now, uh, you've been Muslim for a, a, more than a year. Um, how do they react with you? Do they react the angrily or do you think in, 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 they're getting softer with you? I think definitely... Or do you con are you convinced yourself that one day they will become Muslim? I mean, inshallah, you know, for me and Brother Dawood, we would both hope that our family takes Islam into their heart. But for me, it's like the more I, you know, worked on my character the like the better the relationship between my family became you know i got closer with them you know for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um i'd say with my mama like definitely this was the case for my dad it was a bit more there's there's definitely tension there but inshallah you know it will, it will resolve itself so. so i'm gonna ask you a, a a silly question so imagine um, we hope that they don't pass away without him. And, or if something happens like that, do you, do you consider that, what would you do? I mean, see, imagine you love them so much, like I can hear from your voices, that do you, how do you pray for her, that I hope she finds the truth. Her way, of course, she needs to choose, she needs to uh, um, look for the truth. But how do you make that happen i mean do you pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for her at night time or day whatever you do do you do that of course i pray for all my loved ones to find islam in some way you know um yeah and i mean we do have me and her we have conversations you know and we talk about like different things so i give dawah so hopefully inshallah the dawah gets through but yeah alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah. You know, brother, I, when, I was talk, when I'm talking to you guys, I've noticed something that you actually very close with your family. Both of you guys are very close with your families. You have that, uh, you're maintaining that love and the respect for that family. You know, like it's very convincing for me, honestly. That's really good. That's a good character uh, witnessing that. Um, but in, our, in reality, we hope, and of course for me as well, my, I want my mother to die in truth and she's uh, happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when she dies, you know. She's happy with the Creator that I'm, I'm ready. I'm happy, I know where I'm going, you see. You feel that uh, peaceful within yourself. That, does that cross your mind as well? Of course, yeah. I, same for Tassin, I think, as well. It's, uh, it's, you know, your parents and you love them. You, you want the best for them in every situation. So, and you want them to know the truth, to be Muslim in the end and like for me as well like I make dua for them whenever whenever I make dua really I make dua for them to find the truth I try to give them dawah slowly a bit obviously because I'm here they're back home but I try to bring it up here and there and um, to not to be too pushy of course 
and yeah, just trying to get the conversation going sometimes about religion, about Islam, and just see that maybe, inshallah, Allah will soften their hearts. Just to, just to uh, make it an uh, uh, equal uh, thing, even for me as well. So when I see some of my relatives, Mm, is also not, they can be born as a Muslim, but they're not practicing religion at all. They're opposite religion sometimes. You'll have uh, people who actually don't even follow anything, you see. They don't pray, they don't do fasting, and stuff like that. So, when it comes to parents like that, that uh, even my mom as well, I would always pray for her because I want her to pray perfectly. You see what I mean? Your intention has to be right. You have to do it the way that how the Prophet done it, not how you want to do it. So in, in, when it comes to religion, you can see people are picking up the little things from um, what people are doing it. You see what I mean? They're doing it because sake of doing it. It not, might not be goes with the Sunnah, it might go with the Badr. People made it up. The concept go could be like people falling Badr, people could be like, what you call them, the, uh, something they learned from somewhere else. Nothing to do with religion. Yes, when it comes to stuff like that, so we have to be very careful that we don't hurt them, but we, we want to make sure that they don't do something is, is haram. Something is haram. So it's very it's difficult for us as well when it comes to those dealing with the... For you guys, of course, it's difficult, but for us as well, it's very difficult. How do you convince your mother? She will say, hey, I know everything. I'm, I'm, I'm 60, 80 years old. Are you telling me what to do? Are you telling me I was done doing something wrong all my life? See what I mean? So for us as well, it's a very difficult way to go and keep them happy and at the same time change, uh, not, of course, teach them. Teach them saying, look, this is the right way and this is the wrong way. How was it, was it, when you became Muslim, mashallah, let's go back to, uh, because we all, all of us are Muslim now, mashallah, so we can criticize our deen as well when it comes to practicing deen. We have fine people actually not, they think this is religion, but it's not religion. And they're practicing it. When it comes to, I'm sure for you guys, you've seen a lot of young Muslims, or all Muslims, they don't pray. How do you feel? I feel sad, honestly, when I see it. Because after obviously having found Islam myself, for me, I couldn't imagine not practicing it because it's something that I choose. And when I choose something and then, for example, not do it, like, why do I even choose it in the first place? And somebody who is born into it, it's obviously a different circumstance entirely, but for somebody who already has the truth, but then doesn't practice or even astaghfirullah leaves it in some cases, what I've seen, it's just unimaginable for me at this point. Have you met anyone? Have you spoke to them? When it comes to, because you know... I, I've right? seen, I've seen, uh, I think... And how do they react what? if you ask them anything like that? How do they react to it? Not bad, it's just... I'll just ask them the answer and... In the end, like, there's not much you can do. Why do you think they do this then? Why do you think they found something and they don't accept it? No, ac I'm not saying they're denying it, they're just mm. lazy, isn't it? Uh, why do you think they do this? I think it is, if, if you grow up in something, and maybe that's how you've always done it, because maybe you never were that practicing in the first place, maybe your family wasn't, and this is the norm for you, it's just, I think that for the most part, you just are complacent in the place you are. Brother Thassin, you're a young man. You, you've seen young boys, young men, young, you probably know friends that are Muslim, but they drink, they drug, they do all these things, all right? <coughs> Generally, we're all, we're all human beings. We'll have we've got weakness, all right? It's not about... That's why, actually, it's amazing when we say Islam. Islam is it's not a name of a, a group of religion or, that you can identify yourself. If you submit to Allah, that you're a Muslim. And if you accept Allah from your heart, and Islam is not for one particular group at all. It's for everybody, to be honest. So that that's amazes me. Um, when it comes to young people, Muslims, like your age, especially, you're 18, 19, 20, up to 25, you find them in those bad holes. You see what I mean? Why is it? What do you think is that? I'd say the, with how this dunya is set up, especially in London, you know, there's a lot of fitna around. And from a young age, you're going to be seeing and hearing different things. So, of course, you've grown up in Islam, but you're seeing all these other things. They're new to you. You don't, you know. And, you know, the shaitan makes it feel as if there's an appeal for those kinds of things. 
So they may, you know, try this, try that, you know, and they go towards these things because this isn't something they've, you know, been taught like mm. either well about or they've been taught about it, but they're disregarding it, you know. And this is how people can then fall into, you know, no praying, drinking, drugs, you know, all these kinds of things. So what's the solution, you think? I think this kind of matter is very, it's nuanced because every single person's journey in Islam is going to be different. You know, for a reva, it's a matter of, you know, you have to first find it and you have to learn about it and then practice it as best as you can. But there'll be many times you're going to struggle with all sorts of things. But for born Muslims, you've more or less been born into a structure and you've got the community around you. But then it's a matter of trying to hold on to your Islam, you know, holding on to it. It's like if you were to hold a rope. And that rope is like being pulled away. Your hands, they're going to get friction burn, you know. So you have to hold on. But some people, they don't have the knowledge needed to allow them to keep holding on. It's a matter of there's a lack of understanding. Because for some people, it's a matter of the Islam they learn is warped by people, you know. Um, or the Islam they learn, they haven't learned it in the right way. For some people, they, you know, they don't learn about the love and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They learn about the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, they think, uh, act, do things because they fear Allah rather than doing it because they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, it's important to have both. But if you do things because you fear punishment, you can't put yourself fully into it, you know. But with the love, you have the passion. And with passion comes a want to be better at what you're doing. And this is how people grow in their deen. Because they love their deen so much. They love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down for us. That, you get what I'm trying to say, brother, right? Brother, you amazed me here. You know why? Because um, the word you said... In, in our community, what we're doing is, um, take, let me take it, because I'm, I've told you I'm my age already. That we're telling people, <laughs> we're telling people, young people that, don't do this, is haram, or you go to hell. Don't do this, is haram, you're going to hell. You don't do this, you're going to do that. And he keeps saying, oh, everything I do, he says, this person is no to me. And everything I end up with is, you're going to get punished, you're going to get punished, you're going to get punished. So you start hating the punisher. See what I mean? Technically, mm. we are actually bombarding with these young people with saying no to everything which is wrong, without any reasoning, giving the reasons why shouldn't we do it, and then we're telling them you're going to get punished, 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 punished. But they, don't, they forgot to say, the one who created me, he loves you, he doesn't want you to do this, he's going to harm yourself. So he's telling us, imagine someone having drugs, instead of saying, you do this, you're going to go to hell, and saying, look, he created you, he wants to save you, save you and your intellect, so he doesn't want you to have the drugs, he will, he will mess your head up. Mm. He, and, and, and the theory behind it is he loves you. He doesn't want to punish you. He's that just which telling is haram is because yeah. it's a means for us to stay away from it because it can harm us, you know? So when we tell young people or whatever, Islam says this, we need to say the reason behind it. Why he, because he created me, he knows the reasons. He's all knowing, I won't know, I'm not all knowing. I want to know what he taught me. I have a little understanding. He has a, he had a wisdom behind why he said all these things. So imagine for example, he created me, he created my uh, intellect, my uh, uh, brains, these are most important part of our body. And he told us how to protect it. Okay, so don't touch anything that would affect your brain, like drugs, like smoking could be one of them, could be alcohol and all that stuff. Why you to protect me? You see what I mean? So, like you say, people have, young people are uh, fearing that what would happen to them, and then, like you said, they're just running away from it. They're just running away from it. It's like Allah for, the, for using the example, that was a brilliant one. Um, we didn't have much time. Of course, always a time to end up. Um, eat day. Tell me about food before we finish. 
What kind of food did you guys have? Food? Biryani. Biryani. Your Biryani. favorite one, yeah? Alhamdulillah. What else did you have? Uh, tea, some kebabs, uh, samosas, of course. And uh, then later on, some more, some more deep fried food. Okay. And yeah, so you know, a big plate of just deep fried food, spring rolls, samosas, what not. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, it was good. And some Mashallah. curry later. Later at a different house than when I went there, curry. Alhamdulillah. Zakallah um, Brother Tafsir, you want to start with food? You want to finish with food? Or you have a, a voice to say to our brother, young people are watching you? Uh, the last uh, word within a ha half minute, please. Wait, huh? Say something to our viewers. Half minute. Your last message. My last message. Okay. Um, Asalaamu As Alaikum. Uh, for you people out there struggling with the deen, just remember the Quran was revealed over the span of 23 years. Don't feel like you have to be a sheikh next week. Huh? Take your time to learn and understand your deen. Try and do right for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you love Allah. Okay? And tell your family you love them and just do right by yourself by honoring your family. Jazakallah khair brothers. Uh, Daoud and Tahsin for your time. May Allah bless you. And at the end, we're just going to say Eid Mubarak together if it's possible. Um, ready? One, two, three. Eid Mubarak. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Jazakallah khair.